Okay, yeah. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about, uh, firstly about PICT and then about how it was applied to SQL Backup. Um, so PICT is all about um, all pairs testing. So an example of this is let's say you um, have some web app that you want to test on uh, two different OSs, Windows 7 and Windows 8. You want to try these four different browsers, i.e. i9, Chrome, Firefox, and you want to test it on 96 and 120 DPI. And you want to generate some, uh, build some environments for testing this. Well, what you could do is you could do four that cover everything. So Windows 7, i8, 96 DPI. So sort of choose four different environments that cover everything. But then you might think, you know, maybe there are interactions. Maybe, you know, IE7 with Firefox doesn't work, even though Windows 8 with Firefox does. And so you can try all possible combinations. Windows 7 with IE8, 96 DPI. So there's quite a lot there. So that's two to the power of the number of options. It's something like that. So that quickly gets exponentially unwieldy. So um, a quite common compromise in testing is the all pairs set. So it's a smaller set, but this is a set such that any two pairs of things appear at least once in your vector of uh, in your set of environments. So for instance, um, you know, sort of 120 DPI with Windows 8 is in there, 96 DPI with Windows 8 is in there, 120 DPI with Windows 7 is in there. Not all possible vectors, just all vectors such that each pairing appears at least once in one of the vectors. Um, they're quite, um, these increase roughly uh, linearly with the number of options. So if let's say you have um, 30 possible options, you might have you know, a billion or so if you test to do, if you go through all combinations. But all pairs, you probably have about something like 60, something like that. Um, they're very hard to generate by hand, but Microsoft provide this lovely little tool called uh, PICT, which is available from their website in which you define what you want to test. Um, so they here give the example of wanting to test, you can tell it's quite an old tool actually, different, um, different hard disk possibilities. Um, you define them like so, by giving your kind of list of everything you want, your different versions, i.e. 4.5, 5.5 or 6, <laughs> your, uh, your HD, excuse your IDE. And also, nicely, you can also define uh, constraints as well. So, for instance, you can say, um, yeah, if, if, you're not eight, if you're not an x86 machine, then your RAM can't be 64 gigs. And then it will um, generate you a nice set of vectors that look a bit like uh, this, which you have to run through and test. Um, you can do all sorts of other little things as well. Like you can say, actually, I want all triples. So I want to have all possible triples tested. You can seed it with values to say, I definitely want this vector to be in there and so on. Um, so I ended up applying this to SQL Backup because in SQL Backup there's something called the Backup Wizard, which looks a bit like this. So you go through it, and there's lots of different options you can click. So you can like you know, oh, so you can like choose lots of different things, and this you know has look you know look at all these buttons you can possibly click. You know, it just goes on and on. You know, it just goes more more and more pages. So anyway, so what I did end up doing was defining defining this as so. So these are all the different options. You know, things like, um, I don't know, her name files automatically true or false, backup file with what is single, single with mirrored or split. And then at the bottom, a few constraints because some things don't make any sense. So for instance, if, I don't know, if the backup is file split, then you can't use multiple threads for doing the backup. And then the idea was to put this through PICT to generate automated tests for Ranorex to go through. Um, but, so when you put this through, put this through picked, you end up with something that looks a bit like this. So this is a list of about you know, 30 or I think 20 or so vectors to go through. However, I kind of really wanted this in a, um, in a kind of parameterized testing for the purpose of an automated test. So I wrote a little tool that, check, that sort of pivots this and turns it into, oh, where are we? One second, I'll just open this file up. Um, yeah, it turns into this. So an automated test thing. So you can see, yeah, we've got all the parameters there. They just go on and on and on. And then um, plug this into, um, now these are vectors are run by Ranorex. So Ranorex will go through all possible, all pairs um, of these tests and verify the behavior is correct for each one. So I'll just pick one at random and it should now, oops, should now, uh, uh, run through it. If it's actually found, what's it doing? 
I'm not sure why it's not actually going. Hang on. Okay, there it goes. Okay, it should now just sort of run through it. Yeah, so um, a couple of advantages to doing it this way. Um, apart from the obvious advantages of doing kind of all pairs things, um, if an option gets added later, it can be quite quickly added to the um, list of all, of all pick tests, the, the added to the picked, and then it can all be regenerated and new tests can be created quite rapidly. Um, yeah, and it's just a far easier way of going through this because it used to be a very tedious thing to do actually, is to go through the backup wizard, choose all the possible options, and see how they work at the end. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. Um, any, any questions about all this? Um, okay. Yep. Do you run exactly the same set of combinations of the test um, Yes. So picked is deterministic in that if you give it the same input, it'll give you the same output. So yes, the same come up, um, happen every time. Uh, there's only one little problem, what I just said about if an extra option gets added, then picked will generate an entirely different set of 20. Um, you can you can tell pick to randomize somewhat. I think, I think you can. Yeah, you can tell it to randomize. I think because the the, the algorithm it uses to generate. I don't think there is actually a, a kind of a. Um, there's not a kind of a well. There's not a sort of standard algorithm generating all pairs. I think they just tend to be kind of iteratively improving algorithms that sort of generally generate the whole set. Um, so it, there's there's a bit of you know you can, you can generate. Different vectors as, as it wishes. Um, anything else? Uh, uh, the automation that is running right now, like common places, that is picked itself, or is it? Different? Oh, that's Ranarex. So that's just an automated UI test framework that um, that the that the vet that the vet. So. So, so pick is uh, providing the input uh, test cases to Ranarex, which is doing. Pretty much, yeah. So pick is just the command line tool, which you just do pick dot. I'll just. Tell this is Unfortunately, I probably now can't kill this because um, <laughs> it's only on one monitor. So, picked, you just uh, run like so. So, you just say picked. <laughs> For freak's sake. Ah, die, die, Radarex, die. Okay, there we are. So, you just run picked with your name of your input. So, that'll just be your kind of um, all the possible options and all your constraints. The order of complexity. So, it's by default, it's two. Oh, sorry, the, 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 that will generate all singles, you can generate all pairs, all triples, etc. And that just produces you all the output vectors there. Okay. Is there a direct interaction happening between Picked and Ranarex? Are you just using it to generate the test data then? No, it, yeah, it, yeah it, just generates, it just generates these, um, it just generates these things. And then I just copy and paste them in and run it. There's no, there's no direct interaction. Yeah, I have actually made one with a direct interaction, which automatic. If you want the source code for that, that I, I think I gave a talk on this about a year or two ago, where it actually uses the test case source automatically generates on demand vectors and runs through them. But it's oh, we I'll talk about it some other time. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks.